Although a small organ, tumours and cancers of the appendix come in a wide variety of types. Some are more aggressive than others and have the ability to spread in the abdominal cavity onto the peritoneum. This is the lining that covers the abdominal organs and the abdominal wall. The appendix is a blind ending tube attached to the first part of the large bowel called the cecum and is often around 10 centimetres in length. It is not thought to have any significant function. Due to the structure of the appendix being thin-walled, it may be easy for growths or tumours in the appendix to break through this appendix wall, spilling tumour cells and spreading in the abdominal cavity onto the peritoneum and adjacent organs. Appendix tumours themselves rarely spread outside the abdominal cavity though. Cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC, or heated or hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, is an accepted treatment option for appendix tumours or cancers that have spread onto the peritoneum. Cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC, which is heated or hypothermic intraperitoneal chemotherapy, is a highly specialised surgical treatment offered only in a few centres in the UK for cancers or tumours that have originated and spread within the abdominal cavity onto the peritoneum, which is the lining covering the surface of abdominal organs and the abdominal wall. Cytoreductive surgery involves a team of surgeons aiming to remove all visible disease in the abdominal cavity. This usually involves a combination of removing peritoneum and abdominal organs affected by the tumour spread. Immediately following the cytoreductive surgery, we perform the HIPEC part of the operation. HIPEC is a chemotherapy bath or wash that delivers heated chemotherapy directly to the abdominal cavity for one hour to try and kill or treat any remaining cancers or tumour cells that are not visible to the naked eye. There are a number of appendix tumours which are suitable for cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC. The actual diagnosis of appendix tumour or cancer cannot really be made until a specimen is examined by a pathologist. Perforated epithelial appendiceal tumours are uncommon and can give rise to a syndrome called Pseudomyxoma peritonei or PMP. PMP is a rare syndrome and almost always arises from the appendix. The appendix enlarges with mucus and pops or perforates, spilling and producing large quantities of mucin, resulting in widespread what's called mucinous societies within the abdominal cavity. The incidence is thought to be around three to four cases per million per year. Although PMP has traditionally been regarded as a benign condition, it is apparent that there is now a spectrum of disease in terms of behaviour varying from a slowly progressive low-grade disease or low-grade mucinous neoplasm of the appendix or lamin to a more high-grade mucinous neoplasm of the appendix onto a more aggressive mucinous adenocarcinoma. Presentation can be quite variable, ranging between vague non-specific abdominal symptoms to gross bloating, often leading to a diagnosis only at an advanced stage. PMP can also be an unexpected diagnosis during surgery or may be picked up incidentally on scans to investigate abdominal symptoms or the first presentation as a hernia. In women, it can be often confused with ovarian cancer as the appendiceal tumour can grow and spread to the ovaries causing a mass in the pelvis. With regards to treatment options for PMP, there is the option to watch and wait, there's very little role with chemotherapy, particularly for low-grade disease, which is on the benign spectrum. There is, however, some potential benefit for chemotherapy in high-grade disease or adenocarcinoma. However, the optimal treatment for PMP is cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC. The long-term benefits of this procedure have been well established with very good long-term survival outcomes. These tumours or cancers may be mucinous, producing this jelly-like substance, or colonic type, meaning behaving like a colorectal or a bowel cancer. They can also be signet ring cell type, 
where cells under the microscope look like they contain a signet ring. Colonic type adenocarcinoma behaves like a common bowel cancer. They may go unnoticed and present incidentally as an abnormality on a scan or sometimes present as acute appendicitis. These adenocarcinomas can be aggressive with the tendency to give rise to both lymph node disease and spread to the peritoneum. Therefore, such patients should be considered for referral to a specialist centre to consider cytoreductive surgery in HIPOC. Goblet cell adenocarcinomas are a rare subtype of tumour arising from the appendix. There is a plethora of proposed and historic names which have contributed to confusion surrounding this type of tumour. It is, however, a rare and aggressive type of tumour that affects the appendix. Patients are normally diagnosed after undergoing surgery for an episode of appendicitis. When looked at under the microscope, the cells contain what look like miniature wine goblets. Goblet cell adenocarcinoma can be characterised into three types and can give rise to both lymph node disease and spread to the peritoneum. Again, patients with these diseases should be considered for referral to a specialist centre for consideration of cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC. Patients who undergo cytoreductive surgery in HIPEC for goblet cell adenocarcinomas and appendix adenocarcinomas are often given systemic chemotherapy as part of their treatment strategy. Systemic chemotherapy may be recommended if we feel that surgery is not possible. These are in situations where the disease is far too widespread to safely remove surgically and the risks far outweigh the benefits. Of course, patients may prefer to be treated with chemotherapy alone if they do not wish to undergo a major operation. Another option for appendiceal tumours is a watch and wait policy. This means we monitor the tumours or cancer closely and if it continues to grow, we may then suggest either further chemotherapy or consideration of major surgery. Research has shown that after three months, quality of life does start to return to the levels prior to surgery. Quality of life thereafter can improve in some patients, but this is usually after six months. It's important for patients to understand that although this is extensive surgery, it is possible to live a relatively normal life without the organs removed during your operation, although there are some lifestyle adjustments that may be required. <music>